Championships continues. It's the Grand Prix de Wallonie, a race in the French-speaking southern half of Belgium between Blegny and Namur, all 205.9 kilometers of it. In 2009, starting a very big run of Flemish wins with the odd Frenchman in there too. What about the race then? This is how the parkour looks, beginning in Bligny and heading south towards the border with France, actually, finishing in Namur. The Côte de Trassenstel, the first of the classified climbs. Four classified climbs along the way. Feed zone in Avalanche. And then getting towards the final climbs, the Côte de Hermeton, Lustin, Tienne en Pierre, and then the climb to the Citadel in Namur, where the race will finish. Belgian. But to watch out for Christophe Laporte, but at the moment, Coffert is just resting back. And then the World Tour teams take uh, the shoulder of the responsibility at the moment. Yeah, an interesting move, but oh, as we just see a bit of a crash midway through right the peloton hand side, there. Right inside problem. Oh, that split the bunch. Oh, we've got a lot of riders <laughs> caught up, if not down by this. The rider involved there and down is from Kofidis. It's Loic Chetou. And he's wearing number 35, and I'm afraid he's the man who's staying down there. Yeah, that looks like it's race over for Shidu. Always never very nice to see at all. Definitely. It's very, very painful indeed. Oh, I'm clearly angry about what's happened. Frustrated as well. Already definitely signed for the year after. They also, instead of the stagiaire system, tend to have riders do a stagiaire. And We're approaching the final few climbs now. The Côte de Lustin has just been begun by what is left of the breakaway. I'm afraid we've lost another member of it. Wittgen has been dropped. Very soon they'll be climbing again. What's left of the breakaway? Just two out of the original five riders. In the yellow, it's Baptiste Plankert. And in the blue, white and brown, Nico Dentz. But still two more climbs to go. The last, that will take us to the line. Well, there we go. There's direct energy now on the front. That's going to really start to hurt now. But they know this sort of terrain. Again, not super steep, but 3.2 k's long. That's going to feel like almost an eternity. Dens again on the front. In fact, this is Can oh, no, coming. Sorry, Can yeah. as Terpstra waits behind. So Can Mergen to play his card first, and maybe either out of wait for the finish. That's a good move. One, two, three riders. Oh, Oof. we've had a crash. Not what we wanted. And the rider down is Jens Reinders, who was on the attack a moment ago. Looks as though there's a rider from Azure de Zella Mondial who was involved at the back. That's not good. I hope he's not too badly hurt ahead of the World Championships. Hopefully he'll be able to get up here. I think he is OK. I wonder who is going to start chasing behind. I mean, Trek Siegfried have missed this one. They're going to need to try and... looks like it is Scoins just trying to come across the gap now for Trek Siegfried. And they've already played one card for the minute in Steven. A chance for him to rest his legs now in the peloton and maybe wait for a faster finish as uh, Squinch tries to pull it on. There he is, that Latvian national jersey. Just behind him is uh, Elie Gilbert, who's a really good climber for Arker Samsic. And 63 getting involved for Israel is Chris Nalen. So the two Latvians involved. Nalen's yeah. the former national champion. Indeed, sharing the jersey between them. Swedish champion riding for the Danish team, Rival Readiness. Nalen Sip. Chris Nalen's a great result in the Giro d'Italia this year. Second place on the stage to Esteban Chavez, a very hilly stage, was bitterly disappointed. But has really flourished in this team. Certainly found a good home. Exceptional over this sort of terrain. Never afraid to attack either. Waiting for time gaps back from uh, the front of the race. Nines is looking good here. Remember, won the, his first big overall GC, won the Tour Hungary earlier this year. As well as being a pretty consistent in the Arctic race of Norway, took third place overall. A hatful of uh, top ten places as well. Looking very, very good. Nalen's getting a little gap on those chasing him. And off to the Citadel in Namur. We might be descending now, but we have to climb yet again. We do, and the climb itself actually starts for about two, 2.8 k's, drags up, flattens a little bit, then kicks up again. They go under the flammeroos, and it gently drags to the line, flattens a bit with about 400 to go, then just a slight kick to the line. But he's looking very good at the moment, keeps checking the gap behind. A little bit of slipstream from the camera motorbike, throws himself in front. He's opened up a nice little gap here. 
Still waiting for time gaps. Eight Ks to go. Stay safe, Chris. Yep. That's a nice and smooth uh, road surface from to uh, apply this particular this particular method back onto the top. Beautiful late summer day, isn't it? Ideal racing conditions. You're right at a watch in Yorkshire. Oh, That's a, a wild card pick, I think. Yeah, certainly likes the undulating terrain. He's not afraid of getting stuck in, as we mentioned before, but flying well. Good style. Getting nice and aero on this bike. And Latvia won't have the biggest team, but they will certainly have a couple of star riders. Yeah. You combine him and uh, Tom Scoynes. Really classy little team. And that bike there, the Dorosa, was previously, as you mentioned, the Latvian champion. Still riding the Latvian champion's uh, bike colours as well. Pardon me now, but counter-attack. And you know, Jan Bakalans is going to try and follow this move from Wanti Gobel. Opened up a lead of 10 seconds now. Only 6.4 k's to go. But pretty much all downhill until that uh, little kick up with just under 3 k's to go. And that drag to the line, it twists and turns as well. It's not a straight run into the line. Just, just runs parallel to the to the river. And there's several really tight hairpins. They're going to be mindful of this rider. This rider's won big races in the past, especially over the last couple of years. Yeah, eight victories, including the Tour of Hungary. He's won uh, in uh, Belgium, Netherlands, in the Targeland. Uh, he's been up there in the national championships, Azerbaijan as well. But this would be one of the headline grabbing ones before definitely. the World Championships. No, definitely. A man clearly in good form. Thankfully, very well marshaled. 17 yeah. seconds. Wow. Now this is going to become serious. Yep. Chris Nalon's out there and already trying to make more of a name for himself. What it needs behind. I mean, want to group Goubert are a team with two riders. It's now at this point in the race. It's a critical point in the race. You need to start making really, really firm decisions. <laughs> So I'm not too sure if there's a group two or there is just Nylans and then the bunch. Well, if it is all back together, you imagine that's not great news for Nylans. No. It means that there'll be somebody trying to get organised to bring it down for either a faster rider who's left, a classics finisher. Interesting to see what was committed by Trek Segafredo, for example. Now, let's look back on the road. And look at this gap. It is all back together behind. They're riding strongly. This is all that's left of the peloton. And the last count, it was 17 seconds for Chris Nalens. Yeah. Approaching the final climb to the Citadel in Namur. Great move by the Latvian here. He's just got to stay focused. But look at this. You, there is a combination behind. But thankfully, there's a few riders from the Israel Cycling Academy. <laughs> well, doing what they can. Blocking a bit, but two riders. I think that's actually Jerem Bonnier's on the front now. He's driving hard, but look, there's a few riders there from Trek Sigafredo as well. Yes, so. but Sturvan, I think he's going to be looked after for the finale, isn't it? 24 seconds to bring back, though. And, uh, well, this is a hard one, isn't it, for Tom Scoynes? Does he want to chase down his great mate? <laughs> Tom Scoynes doesn't have to get on the front. He can look after... Stuyven and not be responsible for bringing his fellow countrymen back, although they ride on different teams. Brian Kokar looks like he's still here. Kokar is there. Now it's Aji Tuala Mondial. 21 seconds, three seconds have been shaved off, but he's still fighting well. Now, how much time does he need for the uphill? He needs he needs about 20, 25 seconds, I think, three k's to go. This is where the road starts to just imperceptibly rise, dips a bit, dips again, then kicks. A horrible drag. That series of little switchback turns. It's just running parallel with the river at the moment, and he flicks in. He's shown his racecraft here as well. He knew when to go. He knew the moment. He's managed to hold it on for now. 2.3 kilometres to go, and we're on to the cobbles. Yeah, he just knocks it onto the small ring there. But what is right? He's riding with a lot of fluidity. Still pedalling well. He doesn't look like... I know he's hurting, but he's not riding in too much of a laboured fashion. This is Cucullera on the front now for Lotto Sudal. Really strong rider. Turgi just on his wheel in the blue for direct energy. Here's another one of these really tight switchbacks, but Nylens is taking a good line, keeping that momentum through the corners. Tries to bring them up, and they're at the hairpin now as he sprints out of it at the front. 11 seconds for the rider from Israel Cycling Academy. Chris Nylens has gone for it, and he's just less than two kilometres from the finish line. 
He certainly is. The Citadel is in sight off to the left. Let's look at his face gulping in the air. Back on the big ring now, rolling it through. He's actually managed to find a couple of seconds here, but it's fluctuating out of the saddle, pressing on. Still Kukulera on the front for Lotto stood out. Kukulera still chasing. Nine seconds. Oh, no. oh. Another one of these turns still on that unforgiving pave as well. A series of little tight switchbacks here and single figures now for Chris Nerlens, but a couple of hairpins in front. Now it's a direct energy who moved to the front with a little ride of Messi G in between. Over these cobbles, and it's been a move being made by the, the uh, it is the Canadian national road champion for rally cycling who's moving off the front now. How good he's been in the last few years riding in different races up in the United States and Canada. Adam DeVos is the national champion and he's having a go here. 25 years of age and showing off the maple leaf. And he's still just about in front is Chris Nealands, but he's tiring. He's losing ground. Adam DeVos looking to make a name for himself. Well, 25 years of age, former winner of the stage with Todd Langkawi. Road champion this year, as you mentioned, but this is he eating into the leader, but Nyland's gamely holding on here with about 700 metres to go. And here's DeVos starting to tie up. Adam DeVos has never won a UCI race in Europe. This would be a huge first for him. And a Canadian road champion managing to do it. That would be something special against all of these big European teams. But here goes Tony Gallopin. Gallopin sets off for glory for Azure de Zella Mondial. He knows this finish. He's won this race before, but he's being followed by a couple of riders and stalkers, really, from Wanty Gobert. Inside the last kilometre, and well inside it now for Chris Nealons. He'll better see the finish soon, and he's just about surviving. Would it be something as heroic as to hang on here? He looks around, needs to bury his head. He's giving it everything he's got, but Tony Gallopin's hot on his heels. Well, this is an amazing ride by Chris Nylans. He's still keeping that fluidity. He's determined to try and hold this off. But uh, it looks as if Galapan has been caught as well. He's still got about 75 metres lead. What an amazing ride by the Latvian. I think he might well just do this, Chris Nylan. Looks around. There is Galapan. I'm not sure it's going to be very, very tense and tight. He looks up. He's got half a smile on his face. Is that through pain? Is that through realisation he's going to do it? At the front, Chris Nylans there. They all slow up behind. And they're all playing in into his hands. Israel Cycling Academy have played an absolute blinder here with Chris Nailons. Well, Up he comes towards the finish. He looks around behind. They know that if he's caught, there's a select few to sprint for the win. Sturman, the defending champion, is there. Also, there is Yella Fernandez as well. Left-hand turn now, coming up towards the finish. Nayland still goes though as he looks at them. He's going to have this though because he's 75 metres out and he's going to heroically hang on for victory. Sturman takes off behind. Nayland is going for the finish. Surely his race and surely time to celebrate. Nayland finally realises it and what an attack that was. It's Chris Nerlens who beats Jasper Sturman and in third place I think that was Jens Kukulera. But won by a very, very clever and strong rider. Yeah, that, I mean, it was clever, but boy, was he strong to hold on. The, the flurry of attacks that came, he never missed a beat. He kept that wonderfully fluid pedaling style. He believed he could do it, but I must admit, when he only had like 20 seconds at the bottom of the climb with that group chasing behind, I thought his days were exceptionally numbered. But amazingly, he held on for, well, without a shadow of a doubt, looking at his Palmares, that is the finest win of the 25-year-old's career. Very, very special indeed. Wonderful bike racing. Fortune favours the brave. Well, apologies for some of the language you might have heard in the background there, but they're understandably delighted. Chris Nerlens has pulled it off when it looked as though he might well be caught. What a way to go into the world. I'll tell you what, though, after that, he will be a marked man. He certainly will. Congratulated by the rest of his teammates. That's one of the biggest wins of the year for that squad. All the reaction coming up right after this. A huge victory for Chris Nealons, who's had the best year of his career. Holding off behind Jasper Stern and uh, Jasper de Belst. 
What a victory for Israel Cycling Academy. Almost picked up 30 for the season from the second division. And for Nelons, I think you told me match number five of the year. Yeah, win number five. Two stages at the uh, Tour of Hungary, the overall title there, as well as the Latvian time trial title. But this, by far, the biggest win against some very, very strong opposition. And the manner of his win as well, you cannot take anything away from him. A lot of teams were chasing behind if they just couldn't close the gap. And he went, was that 15 k's to go? It's a long way out, but timed it to perfection. I say, doesn't, doesn't want, just wasn't about timing and the shrewd ability to pick the moment. He had to have the engine to do it, and boy, he did it exceptionally well. But it, uh, you know, we had our hearts in our mouths for a long time. It looks as if he was going to be caught, especially that late move by Gallopin. But no, a fine, fine win. And there we go, radios to his team, who will be absolutely delighted. Win number 27 for the Israel Cycling Academy. Chris Nellard speaking Jasper Sturgeon and Jasper de Boust with Jonathan Iver and Lilian Calmejean maybe having words with each other at the end. They finish fourth and fifth from the same team. Laporte six, Lievens in seventh with Eiking, Galopin and De Kent making up the top ten.